Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. In this video, we're gonna be covering how to set up your organization inside of Dash Pivot, uh, including your projects, your teams, and your users. Uh, so whether you're working on a small project with just a handful of people or a mega project with hundreds or thousands of people, uh, this video is gonna be relevant for you. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the best place to start is actually the way that Dash Pivot has been designed to be set up. Um, so if I uh, switch across to this diagram here, you can see that the way that Dash Pivot is structured is you have your organization, you know, so your company Inc. Um, and then within your organization, you've got multiple projects. And then within each project, you can break it down into multiple teams. Uh, most projects will probably only need one team. Uh, if you've got less than 20 people working on the job, uh, otherwise, we recommend breaking the project into teams uh, by geography. Uh, you know, this might be a, a north team and a south team, uh, or by crew, you know, so it might be uh, an early works team, it might be a drainage team and an earthworks team, for example. Uh, and this really just helps to keep that information within each team uh, highly relevant to the people who have access to it. Um, so another, another time you might want to set up a separate team would be if you have uh, your client or other third parties who you want to um, allow sort of restricted access to the project. You know, you might have some photos or some templates specific to, you know, a team that you want your client to access. Um, and you would store those all inside of a separate team to, you know, your, your internal teams. Um, because bear in mind, the only people who can see what's inside of this team are the people who have access to it. So inside of the product, inside of Dash Pivot, uh, what does this look like? Um, if I open up the sidebar on the top here, you'll see that we're looking at an organization called SM Constructions. You'll see that we've got three uh, projects here in the gray bars. And then within each project, you know, you've got multiple uh, teams here. So I've just clicked on one team uh, and this is what you see. Uh, you know, you've got your people, you've got your activity feed and you know, the different sections. Um, if I want to add another project, I'll just click this button down the bottom here, add project. You know, it might be Kent Street uh, upgrade as an example. Maybe we're working on a civil project um, and we always have to add a single team. So it might be, you know, team one as an example, uh, team two, you know, however many are relevant. And then you click save, uh, whoops, and then you click save and then you'll have that team uh, available straight away. You can click in it. Obviously, nothing has been set up so far, so it's empty, uh, but that's how you set up a team. Uh, if you need to change the name of any of these, you just click this, uh, this guy over here, this little pencil, uh, and then you can, um, you know, you, can, you can change the name if, uh, if required. So now we're going to talk about user permissions, where to add people, um, and what are the different types of permissions that we have. So if I click back on this construction team here, you'll see that within the home section on the left-hand side of the screen, you've got all of these circles. You know, this is basically just telling you who has access to this particular team. Um, the best resource that we have is if you open up this help center here and click on user permissions, we've got an article that sort of has some diagrams and some sort of explanations of the, of the different types. But in, in a nutshell, effectively, you've got your team members uh, who are usually your, you know, the guys who are out on site, you know, your foremen, your engineers, um, in some cases, operators and laborers. Um, these are the people who are filling out your forms and uploading photos. Um, they can't add other people to a team. They, they don't do any of the photo tags set up. They don't do any of the um, templates set up. They can't add templates or anything like that. Um, the sort of the, the standard sort of basic level of um, permissions, um, usually the people who are punching in all of the information. Um, next up, we've got team controllers. So these people have uh, more control over what happens in this team. They can set up the photo tags here, the team photo tags. They can set up uh, templates within this team and they can add other people. Um, and so this is usually reserved for, you know, your senior project engineers or your project manager. Um, that's, that's usually who we set up as team controllers. Um, the, uh, the next level is project controllers. So these are the people who have effectively the same uh, controls as team controllers, except across every team within a project. So in this case, if I was a project controller for Camden Road Upgrade, you know, I've got the same permissions as a team controller but across all of these teams that have been set up. 
Um, the final level is an organization controller. This is a person who has, again, those same team controller uh, permissions, you know, and a handful of extras, but across the entire organization. So every project and every team uh, that's been set up. This is usually reserved for, you know, you might have a head office uh, systems team, a, you know, a general manager, construction manager, directors. Um, it's usually reserved for the senior leadership uh, within your organization, the people who need to have access to absolutely everything uh, that is going on. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, the best place to start is always our help center, which we have here opened up on the side. Um, we've got plenty of articles in here. If you can't find something, uh, feel free to open up the live chat and uh, send us a message. Thanks for watching.